Chamberlain comes onto the scene. They all want to go watch him play basketball. So everybody, let's say everybody pays a dollar to go see Wilt Chamberlain pay, play basketball. Now Wilt Chamberlain suddenly has a lot of money and nobody else does. So what is the, or, and everybody else has one dollar less than he had before. So what's the proper solution to this? Is it that Chamberlain, after providing the basketball service, should then be required to turn around and give everybody his money back? Like, what, this makes no sense. So this, this idea of equality can never be reached. That's why government loves it, because it gives it a constant pretext for intervention. And, and I love your, your view that they're never satisfied. I always say this about, about the left. They never get to a point where they say, okay, American society is just the way we want it. We don't need to change anything else. We finally got here. That ain't never going to happen, is it? No, a absolutely not. I mean, wh where can you show me an example where they've ever been happy with what's there? Uh, I, I don't think you can find one. Uh, it's always, well, okay, yeah, this is better, but we can do more. I mean, th this, is, this is okay, but there's always more work to do. You hear that phrase all the time. We have more work to do. Yeah. What work? <laughs> I mean, what does that mean? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and, and we are the raw materials in that work. It's, uh, it's disturbing. Why do you think the people in your book are forgotten? Well, that's a very good question. I think so. they're, not, they're not all forgotten in, in certain circles. I mean, you think about, as we said, William Graham Sumner. I mean, people know who he is if you're a libertarian, but if, if you're not a libertarian, you've probably never heard of him before. Right. Uh, or, you know, people know who Grover Cleveland is. Oh, yeah, he's the guy that served two non-consecutive terms, but they know nothing about him other than that. Uh, he's a trivia question. Or John Tyler. Oh, yeah, he's the guy that, uh, you know, assumed the president after that, that old president died, right, and, and after a month in office. He's that guy. Uh, the problem is that these guys articulated positions that are completely contrary to the, to the established norms in society today. I mean, they are not what people want to hear. They want to hear the stuff, the greatness of Lincoln or the greatness of Roosevelt or the greatness of some uh, you know, political philosopher that advocates a leftist position. I mean, these are the people that are studied because those are the people that, that like them, and they have the control over, over the thought process. And so... I think that's why the neoconservatives dominate the, the intellectual uh, element of American conservatism. Uh, libertarians, of course, are making great uh, strides, but for years they weren't really a, a factor in the American political discourse. Uh, and so I think that's it. I mean, you just don't have people out there who talk about these people the way they should. And uh, when we were actually pitching the book, we had to go with a very small publisher because nobody wanted to publish it. Um, and it's unfortunate because, I mean, we thought this is, this is good stuff that people need to know. Yeah, that's interesting because you have published with you published with Regnery, which is a major publisher. It's been around since 1947. Published all kinds of big names. Like oh, oh, if you think of the big names of the conservative movement, they were published by Regnery uh, or its ante antecedent Henry Regnery Company. So that's interesting to me. I think another factor here is that these particular individuals don't fit into neat little categories. This one's a conservative. This one's a liberal in the modern sense. Well, these people are not neoconservatives, which is unfortunately what conservatism in the modern sense has become. They certainly do not accept any of the pieties of modern liberalism. So they, therefore, they don't. Have, there's no place for them in the in the comic book story of America. There's no place for them. And of course, if they have some misgivings whatsoever about the course of American foreign policy, then they have to simply be erased from history. Right. Well, you know, we actually pitched the book to Regner, and they turned it down. Yeah, that's I, that was kind of what I was driving at. I, I'm yeah. I'm partly surprised and partly not surprised. And I don't mean to, you know, neither one of us wants to insult Regner. I mean, they do what they do because they want to sell books, and they just try and they they go for the books they think that they think will sell. And if a book, if they think this book won't sell as well as they want it to, it doesn't mean that they're bad. It means that, frankly, the conservative readership is unreliable when it comes to offering them something that's worthy. You can't be sure they're going to want to buy it. They'd rather buy Sean Hannity's ghost-written book. Right. That's exactly right. And I think that was the response. We don't know if, we, you know, if this is going to be successful because of our readership. Yeah. Whether they disagree with it. I mean, I think there are some great people at Regnery. Yeah, and, and I, I think they would, yeah, they would like this book. Absolutely. And, but, you know, they don't know if it's, it's not Ann Coulter uh, or, as you said, Sean Hannity or, uh, you know, take your pick. Uh, it's not... It's not a book about Obama, which you know, they're a dime a dozen now. Um, so it's something different. And we hoped, and actually when Clyde and I were conceptualizing this, we wanted it to be in the tradition of Russell Kirk's The Conservative Mind. Well, his conservative mind is, is snapshots of different people that he thought articulated a conservative position. And yet that That's would cool. never, there's no conservative publisher that would be interested, well, 
there are conservative publishers that would publish that today, but they wouldn't be big publishers. Right. That's exactly right. Of course, that was published by Regnery. Yeah, initially. I know. Uh, yeah. And so we thought, well, this is going to be great. I mean, they're, they're gonna, somebody's going to want to eat this up. And it, you know, but uh, for example, Sam Irvin, we, and we'll talk about him. But he's, he was a Democrat. So I mean, also people get in that mindset. Well, if he's a Democrat, then he's really not like me uh, because. I'm a Republican. <laughs> yeah. So you have that, that situation going on. Exactly. So. Yeah, and that's that's of course a big part of the Regnery audience. I'll just say in closing that when uh, Kevin Goodsman and I wrote Who Killed the Constitution, our naive idea was that we would appeal across ideological lines by blaming everybody. Unfortunately, that's just not how books are sold. They just are not sold. At, hey, everybody has a share of the blame. Nope. You have to sell it. This is the book for conservatives. This is the book for libertarians. This is the book for liberals. That's what people want, unfortunately. So it's a, it can be a struggle. Brian, we'll have to have you back and talk more about some of these uh, forgotten people. I know you've got to run and go teach. So uh, go uh, do that good work, and we'll have you back soon. All right. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Okay, everybody. Before I get to what we're covering tomorrow, it looks like I'm going to be speaking in the Washington, D.C. area on August 1st, which, by the way, is my birthday. So I'll be doing that. Then I've got the event August 15th you guys know about in Nashville. I haven't yet posted the D.C. event because I don't think it's been made public that I'm speaking there. Eventually it'll be on my events page at TomWoods.com. TomWoods.com slash events is the events page. Of course, you can subscribe to my newsletter, and then you make sure and get all the details on what I'm doing, what I'm writing, what's on the show, all kinds of things like that. It's free. It's non-annoying. You get a free ebook for signing up. You can do that at TomWoods.com or at TomWoodsRadio.com. So keep an eye on that. Of course, I'll be speaking at the Mises Institute starting on July 20th and carrying on for about a week for their Mises University summer program. But that will be just for people who are in that program. Judge Andrew Napolitano will be there. It's going to be a wonderful time that week. I am getting started now on the next courses I'm doing for the Ron Paul Homeschool program at ronpaulhomeschool.com, Western Civilization 1, and my government course, Government 1B. People have already taken those courses. Those are available over at ronpaulhomeschool.com. I'm doing courses mainly for the 9th, I guess for the 9th, 10th, and 11th grades. So I'm starting a course on the U.S. Constitution. And yes, I am going to mention Lysander Spooner in that course. But I've done, I've prepared about the first three or so weeks, so I'm going through the colonial constitutions, the, the various charters, covenants, compacts that were written. Then I'm going through the American Revolution and looking at it as a constitutional conflict, which is exactly what it was. And then in the coming week, I'm going to be doing the... Philadelphia Convention, I'll spend three sessions on that. We'll look at the debates over the Constitution. We'll look at ratification. We'll look at the early state constitutions. We'll look at the Federalist. All these key sorts of topics we'll get to. It's unbelievable how many things I'm covering in this course. When you have 180 videos, tend to cover a lot of material. I'm also going to be starting up my Western Civ II course in the coming weeks as well. So that's going to keep me really, really busy. Tomorrow we're going to bring Scott Horton back to the program. Scott is a favorite among you guys, and it's no wonder he's just so darn good. I thought he would be a good guy to talk to us about what is going on in Iraq and what the latest news is from over there. So make sure and tune in for Scott Horton. Make sure you're subscribing to the program at TomWoodsRadio.com so you don't miss an episode like the return of Scott Horton. And make sure and tell your family and friends about the show. The reason we continue to do as well as we do is that you guys are helping to promote the show through social media, through word of mouth. I appreciate that. I am promoting a number of the programs on Facebook so that people are more likely to see them and be able to listen to them. And I'm able to have a budget to do that because you guys have been helping me out either as supporting listeners or by making those Amazon purchases through TomWoodsRadio.com. All right, thanks for listening, everybody. Scott Horton tomorrow. The Tom Woods Show.